Hi, and welcome back to Center Webcast. Um, our next guest is Audia Boyles, the Executive Director of the Alice Paul House. How are you, Audia? I'm good. Hi, everyone out there. Thanks so much for having me and Alice Paul House join you tonight. It's an honor and a pleasure. Sure. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you for, 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 um, for joining us, for, for sure. Maybe you could tell us a little bit about uh, Alice Paul House. For those of you who may not know what the Alice, Alice Paul House does, can you describe uh, uh, what you do and what your services are? I usually can't do it very quickly, but I'll try. Okay. Alice Paul House is Indiana County's comprehensive victim services organization. We've been around for a little over 39 years now, and we provide support and empowerment uh, trauma-based services for victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, serious crime, and juvenile offenders. We also have a 24-hour crisis hotline manned by a trained employee and or volunteer, as well as safe confidential sheltering. We provide uh, counseling, advocacy, and also prevention education and awareness programs throughout Indiana County school districts and the community. Thank you. So I, 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 I'm not sure if anybody actually doesn't know who Alice Paul House is. But I, <laughs> there, are, I, there are some. There are some. Yeah, there there yeah. are some. I realize that. Um, so uh, maybe I can ask, what has been the uh, impact of the pandemic and, and stay-at-home efforts on uh, domestic violence in our region? Well, I think that there's a great underlying impact in the, our community right now. Uh, what we're seeing is something very similar to uh, the holiday season, uh, where individuals that are in abusive relationships kind of um, shelter in place during the holidays in order to keep some type of steady uh, environment for their children, their finances, uh, utilities, and uh, they try to keep the peace within their own homes and shelter in place. And so it's been um, the activity of individuals actually seeking assistance right now has diminished somewhat. And that does concern me. And once uh, I believe that some of our um, mandates and restrictions and um, community health type of activities loosen up a little bit, we're going to see um, individuals reach out uh, much stronger than what we've seen over the past six weeks. Sure. I, um, we had um, uh, jo Joellen Bowman from the Haven Project uh, and it sort of said a similar thing a couple of weeks ago. I was talking about um, there is a, a lull in at least reported activity, um, and and that is, is likely because people are just home. Um, uh, are you are you? Uh, we, we've been it's been five weeks. Have, have you seen any increase? Are you are we seeing the other side of that yet, or seeing people come out? We have not seen an increase. Uh, we've seen a slight decline. However, our crisis line is still active, as well as all of our services. Uh, I still have an active crew on site. Uh, my staff are amazing and exceptional, as always. And uh, they are working. Uh, we have limited face to face because the clientele aren't coming in as often, but we are still providing all of our services. We are assisting with protection from abuse orders, sexually violent protection orders. We're working with the judges, the magistrates, the hospital. We have shifted over to uh, increased services uh, as an additional avenue with tele advocacy and tele counseling. Uh, our shelter is still being uh, reached out to, and we have had new survivors at our shelter and their children. And again, Gerald, if I can say, all of our services are at no cost to our survivors, and they're available to men, women, children, LGBTQ. Uh, we uh, provide sheltering services to any child 18 and under with an adult uh, parent guardian. We are still out in the community working with as many uh, partners out there that we can. As you said, Jo Ellen, she's one of my sister organizations. Uh, we're on calls together every week. Uh, I'm in very close contact with the state coalitions, as I had mentioned prior to us going live. We work very closely with the Pennsylvania Coalition Against Domestic Violence, Pennsylvania Coalition Against Rape, and also the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. Um, so we're always staying up to date and working on that state level also in order to provide the health and wellness to the Indiana community. Sure. Um, uh, 
what kind of things uh, do you think the community should be aware? Of? Well, actually, first of all, can you can you tell uh, read out your your crisis line so we can get that posted right away? Your, um, the hotline that folks uh, are in um, in need of uh, help. Sure. Uh, locally, we see a lot of calls come in on seven two four three four nine four 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 four, but we also have the toll free number, which is one eight hundred. 435-7249. So those are crisis lines of folks, if, if folks are having um, uh, a crisis or a problem with domestic violence, domestic abuse, those are numbers that folks can call and will contact either your facility or other facilities that can help. No, those are our numbers for Indiana, for Alice Paul House. And it's not just domestic violence or abuse. It's uh, domestic violence, sexual assault, or any serious crime. Uh, as well as if there's an issue with a juvenile offender. We provide services across the board to all victims that fall within those categories. Um, so what kind of things should the community be aware of in terms of being helpful and supportive for families? Um, I, you know, on, on social media, we see things like, um, you know, sending a code words. If somebody's in a, a situation where they're not able to call for help easily, that um, folks offer code words. You know, if you, you send me this code word, that means you need some help. Um, what are some strategies that uh, folks can be helpful with their friends and neighbors um, and, and where can people go for that kind of information? Well, there's a, a variety of information out there through, again, the coalitions that I've already mentioned, as well as our website. Uh, you can always access our website. There is an emergency escape button there. We also are on social media. We do receive messages through Facebook uh, and Instagram. We're very limited on the response back. We have our 24 hour manned crisis uh, telephone line and it's a trained staff member uh, available to provide all types of advocacy there. But I would say, and we haven't instituted this publicly yet because I've seen a lot of different code words out there. But I would say if there's an individual out there that um, is in a very difficult situation and was gonna reach out to call one of our numbers and say that they're looking for purple ribbons. Purple ribbons. Purple ribbons is a good is a good code word. I've seen those. Uh, that's the awareness ribbon. I've seen that goes up and down Philly Street for awareness of domestic violence, and maybe actually seen you there as well. You probably was, have. <laughs> um, but that would be a start. Uh, right now, our crisis lines are ringing. We are providing, you know, tele advocacy, crisis intervention, and then you know, doing uh, the referrals to other organizations that may be of assistance in a different way than we are. Uh, another concern that I've seen that has happened is that uh, we are providing referrals and support because there are individuals out there that are homeless that don't fit into exactly our mission and our work. And so we're trying to work closely with them also to provide them with opportunities to find safe housing outside of the abuse of uh, situations. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, there's been, uh, when we were talking with folks who are providing um, food boxes and working for ICAP and, and Chevy Chase and, and things like that, there's, through this pandemic, there's folks who have become newly uh, food insecure. And, um, and I'm wondering if there is a similar situation in terms of family stability that, that, that perhaps uh, there, there may be a situation where somebody could quote unquote live with a, a particular scenario because there is an opportunity to get out of the house, um, whereas now uh, that's not an option. And I'm wondering if you're, you're hearing from folks who are kind of newly needing your services. No, nothing along that avenue. Uh, you know, we provide all of uh, the basic needs uh, should somebody come into shelter. So most of the individuals that reach out to us for that type of support know that, and that's not one of their uh, hesitations. We also have uh, always and continue to assist those who have been uh, clients and survivors of ours if they need assistance with things like that. Um, and I do know that we have also worked over the course of the past five weeks with ICAP and in conjunction with Chevy Chase. And you know, again, we're here to offer a hand to our partner agencies and sister organizations out there too. So if they do need something as I've offered previously, call us and if we can help, we will. I know there was a large demand for diapers a little while back. We weren't able to assist in that, but we did do the outreach to see if we could provide any kind of support there. 
Yeah, one, one of the um, real uh, silver linings, is a great lining that we've recognized doing this webcast um, and interviewing folks is the amazing sort of social safety net that is in our region. And like you said, uh, these, these institutions work um, hand in hand together to make sure that um, really families are not left behind here in Indiana County. And it's really a remarkable thing um, to see happen in action and, and um, appreciate the work that everybody's doing. Um, let me ask, how, so how can people support Alice Paul House? Uh, and I guess I have a particular question. Are, are, do you have you know, sufficient personal protective equipment? Um, are your folks have masks? Is, you know, how, how can, how can uh, the community support you, the work that you're doing? masks you can uh, use masks huh? um i will tell you that right now we are um covered with ppe however we do not and and are looking forward to getting more supplies in all of my staff have the appropriate personal protection equipment uh but we are limited as far as our uh survivors coming in now again i have to step back and say though the pennsylvania coalition against domestic violence has been very helpful to us they have sent us gloves, they have sent us uh, paper towels and disinfectant. And I did reach out earlier this week and they will be forwarding uh, some masks for us, but we could use uh, a few additional if there are any there just for clients that may um, find the strength to come in face to face or have to interact uh, with referrals and that type of thing. We would like to be able to ensure that we have enough for them. We do have an order coming in. It should be here soon that we purchased ourselves, but right now we are slightly limited. So, so it's another it's another one of these places. I know most of our healthcare industry is generally all right, but these masks it seems to be um, are are going like like hotcakes. We've seen them on at least on Facebook. There's a couple different pages, and and people are making tens and twenties and 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 fifty at a time, and they generally go very fast. But it's good to know Alice Paul House is another place where they could go and be handed out to folks who who could use them. Um, do you have a? Uh, is there? What about financial donations? Folks can uh, give to the Alice Paul House probably straight from your website. You know, most of our funding we're we're a nonprofit, so most of our funding comes from federal and straight state grants passed down through uh, the two coalitions I've mentioned as contract managers, as well as the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency. So the, the rest of our funding, we rely on um, fundraising, local donations, donations in kind. And so of course, uh, you know, I know everybody has things to consider right now and they're trying to keep their families afloat and make sure that they're stable. So I'm not in a position where I want to ask anyone for anything right now. I'd rather offer us out at, for services and support. But if you can spare anything, we would appreciate it as we always do, because it is what has made us a staple in this community for 39 years uh, because of the community support and understanding of how integral and important our services are to our survivors. It, it, it certainly is. And I, I really appreciate you coming on and I hope uh, our audience recognizes the amount of, and I think they do, I think folks recognize the amount of work that um, Alice Paul House does in the community in terms of making sure folks aren't falling behind, closing all those gaps and reaching out. I think it's incredible work. Um, is there anything else that you want to uh, let our audience know or, or folks I know, there know about um, about the work you're doing in particular during um, this, this sort of weird pandemic time? Well, I would just like to say again that all of our services are intact. All of my staff is fully trained and capable of assisting anyone that calls or comes to our door or needs tele-advocacy services. Um, we, do, we still are able to maintain our safe sheltering uh, for victims. And so if you need us, please call us. Again, 724-349-4444. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, maybe invite you back in a, in a couple of weeks and see how things are going. I'd love to join you again. And thank you so much. I am going to sign off. Everyone stay safe. Uh, use the precautions, follow the mandates, uh, keep your social distance, and we'll be seeing you all soon a little closer. A little bit closer. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.